They're deep, they're dark, and they're mysterious. And they may be under your very feet right now. Caverns! As surface-dwelling creatures, we don't think about caves often, but not only are they used for scientific research and recreation, they're also important for water movement and purification. A cavern is defined as a natural underground chamber, but before we can go into how and why they form, we need to do a little review of groundwater. The top portion of the soil is called the zone of aeration, also known as soil that doesn't have water in it. If you go a little deeper, you meet the water table, which is the line between the zone of aeration and the zone of saturation. Just below this, in the zone of saturation, water fills all of the little holes in between rocks and sediment. This is where wells pump from. But why is this important to caves? Well, caves form at or below the water table in the zone of saturation. But wait! You need more than just some groundwater to form a cave. You also need a rock that's easy to chemically weather, namely limestone. Chemical weathering involves changing the composition of a rock. But you need one more ingredient, carbonic acid. Well, you're in luck. Rainwater already has it by dissolving carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, but that doesn't mean it can't do some serious damage. As soon as it touches limestone, it begins to react. This creates calcium bicarbonate. The water follows lines of weakness in the rock. Essentially, it will find a crack and make it even bigger. After thousands of years, a cavern is formed. So. Let's make a cave. Here we have some sugar cubes representing limestone. They are sealed by a layer of clay serving as a surrounding rock. Now we're gonna poke a few holes in the clay and then we're gonna fill it with water. And now we have a cave. Of course, we can't forget the most iconic cave features of them all. Also known as dripstone, travertine is a depositional stone formation formed by the dripping of water through the roof of the cave. This process only happens when the cave is in the zone of aeration. Over time, water tables move, so what was once in the zone of saturation is now in the zone of aeration. There are two main kinds of dripstone, stalactites and stalagmites. Stalactites hang from the ceiling. A water droplet seeps through, and when it reaches the air, dissolved carbon dioxide escapes from the drop. Then, calcite separates out and is deposited. Stalagmites grow up from the ground. They're formed when a water supply drips from the ceiling and splatters on the floor. These are bigger and more rounded than stalactites. So, next time you're looking for something fun to do, remember that nature has so much for you to explore. Caves are a part of our heritage. Our ancestors used them for shelter, burial, religion, and for art. So, maybe, could I interest you in exploring a cave?